Jesus was about to ascend from the Mount of Olives back to heaven, carried by a cloud of the glory of God. Before he ascends, Jesus says these words to the 120 followers, disciples. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, <clears throat> how many of you have received the Holy Spirit? Can you speak in tongues? All right. If you can't speak in tongues, we have a Christian growth seminar beginning Monday, not this Monday coming, but the following eight days time. And in that particular seminar, five days of Bible study, you will learn from the Bible that the Holy Spirit, this gift is for everybody. And you will receive, everybody always does, this wonderful prayer language where you speak directly to God in a heavenly prayer language. I'll talk more about that, a little bit about it as we go on. But the Bible says, you shall receive power when that happens. That's what Jesus said, power. To be a witness, to prove that Jesus rose from the dead. That's the distinct difference between Jesus Christ and Christianity and all other multitudes of religions. Our Lord rose from the dead, and he has given us power to bear witness to his resurrection, like you saw this morning demonstrated here, with all those people being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, we have been given this power, whether you realize it or not, all of us should be doing exactly what you saw done here this morning, and that's going to happen soon. I'm going to be teaching a series on the Holy Spirit. This is part three. And by the end of the series, and there should be about 15 parts, we'll continue during the day sessions at um, Celebration. I believe you will be seeing these miracles in your own life. Amen? All right. So what do we receive when the Holy Spirit comes upon us? Say that. I receive power. Tell the person next to you, I have power. Jesus said I do. Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to the Father to ask him to send the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said, Stay in Jerusalem until he comes with his power to anoint you. Stay in Jerusalem until he comes with his power to anoint you. So every Christian who has the Holy Spirit and speaks in tongues has power. The Holy Spirit came just as Jesus said he would. He came just as Jesus said he would on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after his crucifixion, he descended from heaven. On Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there was a building called the Upper Room. The 120 disciples, followers of Jesus, were in that room. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in that room. The Bible says they all spoke in other tongues. They all spoke in heavenly prayer languages. The entire body of Christ, the entire church was represented there that day. 120 people was the total church. And they all spoke in tongues. That was the birth of the church. That's when the church began. And they all spoke in tongues, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. A few days later in the upper room. Now let's go to Acts 2 verse 4, please. I'll read the account. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this, they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit made it possible for them to do so. Now we go on to the letter of John. John is writing to the church, and these are Christians that he has personally led to the Lord. So he calls them his children in the faith. John, the Gospel of John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you. Now skip down to verse 27. The anointing which you have received from God abides in you. The anointing which you have received from God abides in you. So we see here, John writes to the church and he says, This anointing abides in you. Then Jesus said in Acts 1 8, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So we have the Spirit of God upon us and the Spirit of God in us. All right? The born again experience is when we receive the Spirit of God in us. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart and accept Him as your Savior, the Holy Spirit will enter into your heart, or you might say your spirit. Now, you are a spirit being. Those who have gone to heaven before us, their bodies are in the grave. My mother has gone to be with the Lord. If we had to go visit her now, we'd see her and recognize her as she was in the prime of her life, around 30 years of age, looking young and beautiful. You'd recognize her because the spirit of man has the same shape and form and body as the physical man. The spirit of man has a shape, a form, and a body in the spirit realm. The Bible says we are created in the image and likeness of God. The Bible says God is a spirit. So God has a body in the spirit world. Angels are spirit beings, but they have a body in the spirit world. Their spirit, so many angels that come and visit us can take on the shape of a man and the form of a man, and you won't recognize that it's not a man. You'll think you're talking to a man. It could be an angel. That's why the Bible says be ready to entertain strangers because you could be entertaining an angel unaware. You see? Now, so, folks have gone on to be with the Lord. They're in heaven. You'll recognize them just like you did when you were on the earth. That is the spirit of the man. All of us have a spirit being. That's who you are. You are a spirit being living in this clay body. When this clay body gets old and gives up, you leave your body and go to be with the Lord, if you believe in Jesus. Now, when you ask Jesus into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes into that spirit man and fills that spirit man from head to toe, And your spirit and God's spirit become one spirit together. All right? Now, when you receive Christ and your spirit is full of the Holy Spirit and become one with God, then you will see everything change. You will see that you have received the nature of Jesus. You will start experiencing His love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, self-control. That's because you've got the Holy Spirit, the born-again experience, in your spirit. What Jesus spoke about in, John, in, in Acts 1 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, is a different experience. That is for service. Service. You'll be a witness for Him by the power of God, demonstrating He is a resurrected Lord. All of us are supposed to be able to do that. Not some. The power of God upon you allows you to operate by the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Three utterance gifts, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Three revelation gifts, word knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. The three power gifts, gift of faith, gifts of healings, and working of miracles. Those gifts operate because the Spirit of God 
has come upon you, equipping you to be a powerful witness for Jesus. Not only, not only supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles, but also he's come to guide you. We heard that and learned that last weekend. He's come to guide you. Jesus said in John 16, verse 7, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Jesus said in John 16, verse 13, he will guide you and he will tell you things to come. He will show you, actually, he says. He will show you things to come. He will show you the future. Thank you for watching Dr. Theo's YouTube channel. We will continue to offer encouraging and life-changing highlights from Dr. Theo's past, present, and future series and messages. Please take the time to like and share the videos. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.